Okay. Uh, hi, my name's John. I'm a sophomore, uh, professional flight major, and I was categorized as a fighter. Uh, hi, I'm Zach. I'm a sophomore, also in professional flight, and I was a change agent. My name's Dylan McGuire. I'm a junior here at UNO, transfer student from SCSU. And a waiter. Okay. Um, question one. Do you feel as though your category on the DAP spectrum changes based on the situation uh, you are in? For example, do you feel you act one way in a social setting with your friends versus a work management situation? Which DAP category do you gravitate towards in different settings? Uh, I'll start. For me personally, I think uh, I'm a fighter in both situations. Um, if I see something that I don't agree with at all, I'll say something because you're not going to change the world by not saying you don't like something, just keeping it to yourself. You're going to have to let them know to be better and change their like perspective on life. Yeah. I like that answer. I can go second. I would argue being considered an avoider from the, the test, I would argue that I would be a change agent more with my friends in a social sh setting. But in a workplace, I would also argue that I'm a fighter, fighter in that category, just to, to really take control of like, social situations that shouldn't be happening in a sense i like it uh for me i was a change agent and like with my friends and everything like that i agree that i i am but like in the workplace i don't know especially if you're like really low on the totem pole like if it was a manager or like your boss i don't know if i'd really say anything to them so i'd probably just be an avoider in that situation really <laughs> Okay. I don't like to mess with authority. <laughs> Fair. Okay. Um, question two. Do you think uh, an inventory such as the DAP can explain complex human behaviors such as situations where we deal with diversity or is it a tool to get us, get us thinking about the topic of diversity? Uh, I think it could be both personally because I mean it explains like what you are in relation to diversity and whether you see a problem or something you don't agree with but it also can uh, remind us of, of what is what we are and what is right and wrong and if we don't like it then we could remind like just think back for me personally oh I'm, I got a fighter so I, I have to do something like I have to step up I don't agree with it. Zach, you go next. I need to think about this one a little bit. Hmm? You go next. I need to think about okay. this one. Um, I think with the DAP, it, like, it can, like, really open your eyes to, like, even stuff that you might not notice. Like, if you answer truthfully to all your questions, it'll help, like, show, like, even if you don't realize how much, like, little you do it can help you like see that you need to say more and do more to help improve social settings. I like it. I like it too. I think, I think it's a pretty major tool in the sense that I've never really looked at this from a perspective of a uh, different diversity and feeling um, like I need to help fight for someone that is that is needing a helper kind of deal but but yeah I think it's a great tool I agree yeah um this week we watched a frontline episode featuring Jane Elliott uh, what category would you guys place Jane Elliott on the DAP and why? Uh, for me personally, I would put her on, I, I would put her in the fighter category because she is going places and she's going to do talks 
uh, trying to educate people on, on a problem that she sees and a problem that is occurring everywhere and trying to educate them to help change the problem. Like without, without her, they, people wouldn't know about the problem. They would know about it, but they wouldn't know how to act and how to change the problem. Oh, that's sweet. For me, I think it was crazy that she was such, such a real changer and the fact that it was like 1967 or something that she was doing all this. No, it wasn't that late. But, ah, I'm trying to even think what year it was. But it was it was mid 1900s, and she yeah. was really she was really in on it when it wasn't a topic of conversation at the time, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, she would be a fighter, a change agent for sure, with the fact that she really put other people in perspective that probably didn't have any type of perspective of others that were different from them, like in the the jail workers she really put the white people the blue-eyed people mm-hmm. into a whole different spot that they've never been in before yeah yeah i agree, I agree. Mm-hmm. yeah she is she's definitely a change agent probably a fighter just because like especially with how early it was talking to the kids about it and just like putting in their minds that like you need to think about that and that everybody is equal and putting them through the scenarios in the classroom that like kind of not exactly but like put them more in the shoes of other people that were going through all of that in that time and made them see more towards the consequences of all the actions that they were taking i agree i agree All right. I think that's it. I'm going to stop the recording.